All right, I'm the Flat Rate Master, and today we're talking about shops transitioning pay systems. All right, pay systems. Now this is can be all. All right, this can be a huge, pissing a lot of people off kind of discussion, but I got a question from Josh, I'm not gonna say his last name because I didn't get his permission. Shop owners, basically I'm gonna paraphrase it. Shop owners transitioning from flat rate pay to salary hourly or vice versa, going from hourly to flat rate. Talking about transitioning pay plans. Now I'm gonna say this first and foremost, I've never been in a shop in person working there when a pay plan changed across the board. I've had, you know, raises and stuff like that, but I've never had in a shop I worked at where they went from hourly salary or bonuses or, you know, something to something else. I've either been in a flat rate shop or a hourly commission shop or, you know, whatever. So one of the big things about transitioning pay systems is you got to have support of your crew, whatever the pay system is. Um, you know, please do not make this a flat rate versus hourly discussion in the comments. That's not what it's about. It's about pay plans going from one system to the other, regardless of what it is. Let's discuss it. Little background, the management gurus say a payroll should be a 33% loaded number of your hourly rate. Just for simplicity, let's say $100 is your labor rate. So your cost for each employee should be 33% of that, $33 an hour loaded. Now that's important. What I mean by loaded, is that is unemployment insurance, social security taxes, health insurance, all those expenses that go with having an employee, not just what they make per hour. So important to understand. But the gurus say 33%. That's not to say everybody in the shop makes, you know, loaded 33%. That means across the board, average together, it comes out to 33% or less. Some of the super management gurus say your loaded cost should be lower like 22%. And I've actually interacted with technicians and shop owners that went through those management gurus. I'm talking the, you know, come in and revamp everything. And their plan is, yes, they're gonna lower their payroll costs. The problem is, is they're gonna do it by cutting techs, going to lower experience techs, paying them less. That's how the shop makes more money, which is a bad thing for, you know, techs. I actually was dealing with a shop, I think it was in South Carolina, and they were going through the whole program with them, instantly got rid of three master techs, the shop had four, and they left with one and replaced them with very inexperienced kids. And it turned into a cluster for everybody really, because they had too many inexperienced and not enough experience. Now, we're not gonna get into that whole thing. I just wanted to clarify two different positions for loaded payroll cost opinions. So, but when you're thinking about transitioning pay plans, you really need the support of your crew, the guys that are gonna be dealing with that new pay plan. A lot of times in dealerships, a new general manager will come in and all of a sudden, across the board, everybody's pay plan changes. You'll see a mass exodus of those employees. Cause you know, you went from making this to this, or now you've got a super confusing pay plan. Like I applied for a job a long time ago and it was, you know, based on 
your hourly, but you know, based on your productivity, you got this much or this much or this much or this much. And it was just like, uh, no. But it's important if you're thinking of transitioning, no matter what it pay plan it is, is making sure the guys you have in the shop or gals are gonna be happy with it. Everybody focuses on flat rate when I talk about pay plans because one, it's, you know, what I talk about a lot, but at the end of the day, it's what you take home in your paycheck that matters. End of the week, end of the month, end of the year. That final number is what matters. It doesn't matter how they pay you, it's just that final number. And a lot of times with pay plan changes, unfortunately, the technicians are the ones that suffer. It's not to the advantage of the technicians, it's to advantage of it's to the advantage of the shop owner or the franchisee or the dealership or whatever. It's usually not going to be in the favor of the technicians. So if you're a business owner and you're thinking about changing the pay plan, keep that in mind. If you have good help that you want to keep, you, you got to pay them. Regardless of how you pay them, you got to pay them well. Now, one of the things that I've seen is again, dealerships, mass exodus, shops where they come in and pay plans all change and a bunch of guys leave. You know, they start seeing their paycheck not being what it used to be and not in their favor, they're not gonna stick around. To give you a story, a local shop owner who is friends with my shop owner, the owner of this shop, he started a new facility. Now his current shop was strictly European and they're a great shop. I know one of the service riders there, he's a cool dude. They opened a second location specializing in Asian. Now when they opened, their technicians were hourly because it was a brand new shop. We don't know what's gonna happen so we gotta make sure our guys are taken care of. And the story goes is after they got established, they've got shop making money, they changed the pay plan to everybody's favorite. Oh, flat rate. Guess what? Everybody in the shop but one paycheck went up. Now, I don't say this story because flat rate's king, whatever. I'm not getting into that as far as... I'm saying that not because of, you know preferences for flat rate, I'm saying it as an example of changing a pay plan in the favor of your employees, not in the favor of the employer. Now, another example is at this shop, when we opened, and I was one of the original technicians at this shop, we started on flat rate, but we had a minimum. A minimum varied considerably. I had the lowest minimum of anybody in the shop because I had the highest pay per hour. The other technicians had a higher minimum because they had a lower per hour flat rate. Now, since then, anybody new hired has a minimum of 30 hours. And almost never does anybody in the shop have to use their minimum, which is a different way to start a shop and make sure your guys are taken care of. There is an old joke on IATN about shop owners. They call them ESO. That would be evil shop owners. And unfortunately, a lot of times when they change pay plans, it's not to benefit the technicians. Josh, thanks for the idea for the video. Hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like it, subscribe. Make sure and hit that bell notification so you get notified when I put out a new video. If you didn't like the video, give me a thumbs down. Comments are always appreciated. And as always, thanks for watching. I am the Flat Rate Master.